Hey, welcome guys, Bob here from bobsplumbingvideos.com. Today we're gonna to talk about the trip lever waste and overflow assembly. How to adjust the linkage, some things to look out for, especially if you're gonna put a snake up top to clear out a stoppage, and just generally try to take the mystery out of it. So stick around. So folks, here it is, a simple trip lever waste assembly. Now, this is found most commonly on residential bathtubs. You'll find them commercially, too. This particular one will accommodate tub heights of anywhere from 14 to 16 inches. And the concept is pretty simple. When you want to take a bath, you're going to flick the lever up. And at present, this is in the up position. And the plunger inside this T drops down. And that will allow the water in the tub to fill take your bath. When you're ready to uh, get out of the bathtub and you want to drain that water, very simple. Reverse the procedure. You're going to take this lever. You're going to push it down. When you push this down, the plunger in here lifts up, thereby allows the water to go down. Now, over the years, uh, you're going to accumulate soap scum. You're going to accumulate hair. You're going to accumulate a lot of things. And folks, I got to tell you, a lot of people, what they do is they take the little strainer off here because they want the water to, down, to go down quicker because uh, after a while, they, they feel it's not draining enough. So I find a lot of people remove these little screens, thereby uh, having no protection for hair. And as a consequence, they bathe their kids in here. And uh, a lot of times I find, uh, believe it or not, little toy soldiers that works its way into this little shoe here. And if that gets down into this tee, you're in big trouble. We're going to go over this piece by piece. I'm going to show you uh, a close up of the inside of the tee. I'll take this trip lever uh, faceplate off and we'll kind of go over the anatomy of this thing so you have a better understanding but pretty much it's a simple little apparatus again you should keep your you should keep your uh, factory strainer intact that's going to keep the hair at a minimum of going down the drain but again when it starts to clog people have a tendency of removing this thing and and that just leaves room for little things to get down here and you want to be very careful about stuff getting down inside this T. So let's move up to this faceplate. I'm going to do a close-up of this faceplate. I'm going to show you uh, what happens uh, when you remove this uh, because you're going to have to go in there and actually remove this and pull everything up because sometimes over time these things lose their ability to stop the water up and you may have to adjust the linkage in here, there's a linkage in here. You can raise and lower this plunger. So let's go over it piece by piece, starting with the faceplate. Then I'll go down. I'll give you a close-up of the inside of this T. I'll show you how that plunger operates, and hopefully you'll have a better understanding. So next time you, you go to attempt to adjust your trip lever faceplate, uh, you'll go in there with some confidence. So stick around. So let's stop the clock for a second. Before I take you into the close-ups of top and bottom. Let me pull this out, show you what this linkage looks like. Not too difficult. There are two screws here that come out. And we will back these screws. I just want to take this out and show you the linkage before uh, we go into the finer details. And you know, different manufacturers are going to be minimally different. These are pretty uh, industry standard, if you will. So this is giving me a hard time, but we will get this out. So simply. And you may have to give it a, there you go. And so this is basically what this looks like. This is what this linkage looks like. And if you can see that plate there, and there is an adjustment here. The top of this rod here is threaded and it's got a little nut on it. And you can raise or lower this whole mechanism. And if you look at this particular plunger here, not all of them, but this particular plunger has a couple of O-rings on there, which is a nice little feature. 
Um, most of them are brass to brass, but with these O-rings, it gives you that little extra um, insurance that the water is going to hold really, really tight. So with that in mind, and we will take a closer look at this, let's, uh, let's jump into the next shot and I'll give you uh, a close-up of the top of this overflow. All right, so here is this overflow assembly. And what I want to point out on this particular overflow is that this actually has a, a locking plate. This plate actually goes on the inside of the bathtub. And what this does through use of these two screws, it keeps this, it keeps this overflow, the back part of the overflow from actually pulling away from the bathtub. And that's very, very important, especially in a case where you have to have somebody come in to snake out the bathtub because you have a stoppage and they have to introduce a snake into it because all the snaking has to be done through the overflow because the snake would be introduced through the overflow. It would go straight down the overflow, past the T into the trap and onto the drainage system. And without these locking backup plates, I can tell you that in uh, in the real world, these overflows, when you take the two chrome screws out to get the plate out, the face plate, I have found in a lot of cases, these things wobble around. So if you're just going to change a face plate, that's not really a big deal because you can pretty much uh, hold it in place. But when you're sending a snake down here and you're running a sewer machine, this thing has a tendency of bouncing all over the place. And I can tell you that if this overflow walks or jumps out of that T and comes loose, you are going to be in for a plumbing job and a half. So let me back off these screws here and show you what this looks like. Not every trip waste manufacturer supplies you with this locking backup plate. But if you can find ones that do, I highly suggest you use them because... They're going to be there and they're going to protect you, especially in the event that you're going to be a, a DIY, uh, let me clean my tub out, I'll go rent a snake and put the snake in there, because this will ensure that you, um, you won't lose the overflow tube. So this one has two screws. This is a full backup uh, plate. Some of, them, some of them are just little U-shaped plates that go down to the bottom the bottom portion of the tub right around they'll go from here there's a screw here a screw here and they'll hook on and they'll just go around the bottom portion of the tub so the thing doesn't pull out this is a full backup plate and i actually love this uh, particular company so what would happen is is that this goes on the back of your tub this would be on the back of the tub coming in from the back of the tub this is this is inside the wall. This is going to go on the face of the tub, the face of the bathtub. And that's actually going to keep this from, from popping out. So this is a locking backup plate. If you can find a troop waste assembly with this locking backup plate, it's going to be a great thing for you, especially if you think you're going to be snaking out the tub. Because again, when you remove the original plate, which is this, and you take the two original screws out, if that overflow doesn't have a, a locking plate on it, that's going to have a tendency of, uh, you'll see that it'll, it'll actually, it'll move behind the tub. And again, if that pops out of the T somehow, I haven't done it, but I've come close. You're going to be in for real, real trouble. So, and, and that's pretty much it on the overflow. Other than this is where the linkage goes in. You would put your plunger in here. And that all goes down inside. We will go down to the T. And you have to maneuver this in here and pretty much that gets put on like this. And again, it's going to be an up and down. It's going to be an adjustment of the linkage to get the plunger to be in the right spot. So it takes a little finessing. You know, sometimes these are a little aggravating to do, but hey, 
you know, that's the, that's the name of the game. So let's see if we can get our plunger out of here. And there we go. So let's jump over now into the bottom of the T. And I'll show you what happens when you raise that linkage up and down and, and how it stops the water up. Uh, again, this goes on the back of the tub. This is inside the wall. What you're looking at in my hand at present moment goes on the back of the tub. On the front of the tub, on the face of the tub, on the finished porcelain part of the tub, the locking faceplate goes. And then you could put in your uh, two screws, and that securely holds this and keeps it from moving. So let's drop down to the T. All right, so plunger is down, which means you can fill the tub up, you take your bath. The trip lever is in the up position up at top. Up top, the lever is in the up position. When it's in the up position, the plunger drops. Now, when I flick it down, you see the plunger goes up and that allows the water to drain. Now, this particular plunger, as I mentioned, has a couple of O-rings on it. There's one on the bottom. There's also one on top. This is as far as this plunger goes down. So that's the reason you see the little O-ring down there at the bottom, but it's in the fully down position. And you have to finesse these to get them to operate properly, but you want to get as much lift out of this as possible because you want to get approximately, you know, as close to 100% in terms of uh, the area the water drains out of. I mean, as you can see here, I'm fully down and you can still see the plunger sitting there, but that's plenty, plenty of space for the water to go down. Uh, I, I played with it, I adjusted it, and, you know, if I try to get this up any further, what's going to happen is when I go to plug the water up, it's not going to sit down far enough. So you have to play with it. And what I'll do is we'll just jump into the next um, uh, the next segment, and I'll just show you uh, the adjustments on this particular one. So, you know, some of them, some manufacturers are different than others, but pretty much this is the action. This is what happens. So when I go down with the lever up top, uh, the, the plunger lifts up. When I, when I push the lever up top in the up position, the plunger drops down, stops the tub up. And this is what's supposed to happen. And, and uh, yeah, let's move to the next segment. And I'll, uh, I'll show you the adjustments on this particular unit. All right. Here is this particular manufacturer's plunger. Now, you see there's two adjustments, two main adjustments. The cotter pin is at the top here the first adjustment, then you have a second one down here. So you could actually pull that pin out and you could raise the whole assembly up, the whole linkage up by just moving the hole. And then what they allow you to do through use of this threaded rod here, this is threaded. You could take this lock nut, back the lock nut off and you could fine tune up or down the height of the plunger. And that's a nice little touch. Now, some manufacturers actually give you the adjustment in this location here. Over here, you can see we have two uh, rods that are that are clipped together. But uh, other manufacturers have a, a it, it's a plastic piece or a plastic swivel, if you will. And coming in from each end are threaded rods, and they each have a lock nut, so you can adjust each one up and down. That's after you, 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 you adjust your main adjustment here on top. Most of them have two adjustments on top. So you have your first adjustment here, which is where this is plugged into. And you could also move it up to the second position and you could move the threaded rod up and down to adjust or fine tune it. Other companies don't have the threaded rod up in here. Other companies have a double threaded rod in the middle that's uh, connected to a coupling, if you will, plastic coupling. So you'll have a threaded rod coming up from the bottom, threaded rod coming down from the top with two lock nuts. You'd loosen the both lock nuts, do your adjusting, tighten the lock nuts up, and then and then go, and then go uh, and and kind of fine tune it. One tip I will give you is that if you go to adjust these things, what you're going to want to do is at least what I do is before I put it back in and I make sure everything's clean, I take all the soap scum, I take all the hair and garbage that you're gonna find in here, get yourself some grease, waterproof silicone grease, give it a little uh, generous smear, if you will, 
and then you could put that back in the overflow tube. So let me jump back up. I'll give you uh, my final uh, opinion on everything and how it's supposed to work and what you can do in the event. You don't have that lock nut holding the overflow in place and you want to uh, maybe go out and get a snake and uh, snake your drain because it's clogged. I'll show you what I do in order to keep that overflow from popping out, even if it doesn't have a lock nut. Okay, so your tub is stopped up and you uh, took the strainer off and you, and you got whatever hair was out of here uh, and the water still doesn't go down. You've adjusted your uh, plunger up and down and you're pretty sure that this is all clear. Everything is nice and clean and you've decided I have to snake this tub out. Now, whether you call a plumber in, whether you do it yourself, what you have to be careful of is the fact that if you don't have that backup plate up top, you know, what do you do? You get a chance this thing getting loose, shaking out of this tea, and you don't want that to happen. So what I actually do is, I got to tell you, most of them don't have that backup washer. Most tubs that I go on to clean a stoppage out of don't have that backup washer. And let me just back up a second. When you have to clear a stoppage out of a tub, you don't introduce the snake through here because then it's got to go through the, what we call shoe, and it would have to go to the T and make the sharp turn and then bend and then go into the trap. It's just too many turns, too many tight turns. You're going you're gonna to be in for a world of trouble if you try to put it in from here. What you want to do is put it in from the overflow so the snake can drop straight down into the trap and make the one turn through the trap into the drainage system. So what I do is when I take this faceplate off, as I mentioned, and in most cases, in most real world situations, you're not going to have that lock washer holding this overflow to the back of the tub. The overflow is here, but we're going to make believe this is not here. And in most cases, this is not here. What I have done is this. I've taken a brand new faceplate because these plates are replaceable. They get ratted up sometimes. I, depending upon the area of the country you're in, these get all limed up and they, they start to get uh, corroded because they're really not. These are just coated, uh, chrome coated nickel uh, metal plates and they get ratty after a while. They start to pit. And you can actually go out and buy a new plate to replace your old plate. So you simply, you know, it's a matter of removing the cotter pins and you could switch out the plates. But what I have done is I've taken this plate and I've actually dismantled the trip lever here, if you will. I've actually taken the trip lever out. I've bro broken it off. And what I do is I, I, I've drilled a hole. After I take this trip lever out, I drill a hole about a three quarter of an inch hole in between the two holes that connect the overflow to the back of the tub. And what I'll do is I'll put this plain cover without the lever. It's just got a hole in the middle. I secure it to the back of the tub with the two screws, the two chrome screws that hold the plate on. And now I have something holding this so I can introduce the snake in through the hole in the middle of this plate that I put in, send it down, tighten it up. I don't have to worry about this you know, coming out. And that's pretty much it, guys. I mean, this is pretty much how a trip waste assembly works. It's not really brain surgery. So, you know, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you got a little uh, knowledge out of it, maybe give you some confidence to go in there and do this yourself. So what do you guys do? Have you ever come across a situation where you had to adjust this um, plunger up and down? Has it given you a headache, so to speak? Hopefully I can eliminate some of those headaches. Uh, Put your comments down below. Let me know how you guys do it. If you enjoyed this video, I would surely appreciate uh, a thumbs up down on bottom. Hit that notification button and you'll know when I uh, put out a new video. And uh, please subscribe to my channel. So I hope to be seeing you guys again real soon. Stay well. I'm always glad you stopped by and happy plumbing.